Hey, it's Monday night once again. We're back after a short hiatus. Hope everybody had a good Memorial Day. Tonight, our guest is joining us all the way from Scotland. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the one and only Philip Banks. That's right. And he's live. <laughs> he's coming in on Zoom. And he's very awake. Very Amazingly, awake. He's a professional international voice actor after all. He's, he works 24 hours a day. The man does not sleep, clearly. Plus, we've got, uh, we've got a couple of questions. And we're going to talk about the size of the room in which you record it. And how that changes things. So stay tuned. Coming right up here on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. I have to pretend there's a room full of people, people. cheering VOBS. I mean, usually it's a room full of people in here, but no, tonight it's just the three of us. Intimate. Yes. I think it's because they know our guest is far, far, far away across the globe. Yes. So. And they're like, well, if we're not going to meet him. It's like, why show up? <laughs> not even Jack came tonight. Yeah. I mean, the, the big stars come. <laughs> you, you know Jack's going to be ah, here. Jack. And the better looking the one, the, 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 <laughs> <Bro. laughs> uh, as you were saying, I think Jack has a girlfriend now, Dan. Oh, okay. You're right. Anyway. And she's probably there. <laughs> Jack is uh, at home taking, uh, doing our at least he social was. media. <laughs> Yeah, social media and handling that stuff for us tonight. We really appreciate it. So what's Absolutely. going on tonight? We don't have a regular news story. But, no, no. Uh, what, what John Florian is on a cruise. Good for him. So there's no news you know? from his cruise. Well, that's no news is good news when it comes to cruise lines. That's, yeah, that's it's really been going lately. Like, no, no salmonella, no sinking, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. What have you been up to? I've uh, been busy. Yeah. Uh, fix building studios and stuff like that. Talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, you know, helping out, uh, you know, my, my son Jacob is going to be doing a long and tedious internship at Warner Brothers Animation. That's awesome. Good yeah, which him. is going to be really cool. And we actually have one of his latest cartoons at the end of the show. So don't go away Ooh. after we All are right. finished because you'll get to see his work and combined with some other people. And it's really cool. All right. So without any news, I guess we have to go talking about tech and stuff like that. So uh, I guess you can lead off with uh, something that's going on with uh, Mr. Cipriano, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. So of all the things that have come across my bow the last couple of weeks, I try to think of things that might be of interest to, to some of you, especially you international voice actor travelers, which um, it's, it's travel season. Yeah, yeah. Some of you are going to be traveling and some of you may need to work. Joe, in the case of Joe Cipriano, he's going to be traveling to, I believe, Italy. Um, he might be on the way there now. And he wanted to have internet that would work almost anywhere he goes. There is no perfect, universal, one-size-fix-all thing, magic, that gives you internet everywhere you go. Some of you might go, 
Hey, what about, what about the GPS thing? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yes, there is. There are G, not GPS. I'm sorry, satellites. Satellite. There are right. satellite uh, systems, um, but you know, satellites are just not happening um, for what we do. The latency is too. It's a little bit too high, especially if you're doing anything with Source Connect. So it just doesn't make sense to do to do satellite yet. Um, eventually, we're going to have low Earth orbit satellites from from probably Facebook or Google. And, Ones you can like reach out and actually grab. But, yeah, I think okay. you'll see them at night. They look like little stars <laughs> floating around the planet. You know, that's going to happen eventually. We're not there yet. So this is the next best thing. It's a thing called Skyroam, and um, I can bring a shot of it up. I have the technology, and you guys can see what this thing looks like as I switch sources here for our show let me go to chrome here we go now you should be seeing my screen i see so it. this is the website skyroam.com get wi-fi let's see what this thing is it's a cute little round hockey puck sized thing uh, which is kind of cool it's got built-in uh, battery so it runs on its own battery um, but i think what makes it interesting is it's a pay-as-you-go thing and it works well they're saying basically in all countries and mm -hmm. that's the most important thing because if you've had to travel and roam with your phone it's a pain in the neck um it gets extremely expensive sometimes i'll say go get a sim card at the, the bodega down the street from your hotel and right. you can get a cheap you know internet but those things can be a pain in the neck this thing covers you and you pay a flat monthly fee to use it um so that makes it really stand out you only have, that's what I think that's cool about it. You buy the thing once, you keep it in your bag, and you just pay for the day you're going to use it. It's like eight euros, something like that for a day. Wow. I mean, that could save your job. You know, it's a good backup for the hotel internet, which is a total crapshoot. Right. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. Um, but again, you, you have to remember it's not going to work everywhere. If you're staying in a villa in Tuscany in the hills in wine country, good luck. You know, it, it's not going to work. So, right. but it's, it's a very cool thing. I like, I like its form factor. Um, cool. See if there's anything more of interest on here on the website. Nope, there isn't. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, next that's subject. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it's also a battery charger. So if your phone battery is going low, it can charge your phone. Oh, so that's cool. Cool. Two I, in one device. It's like when there's no outlets available at the airport. Yeah. You know, you're sitting there, come on, it's charged. It's charged. Okay. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Mac has a new system coming out. Mojave. Yeah, today uh, was the, what do you call it, the Worldwide Developers Conference for Apple. And sometimes they in introduce stuff that's exciting, like new Macs and new iPads and stuff. But this time, no hardware, nothing new computer-wise. It was just all about software. And their biggest announcement is their newest iOS, which is iOS 12, which I personally don't have any devices that'll even run it, so I don't personally care. And then there's um, Mac OS Mojave, which is 10.14. And um, again, a lot of features that have zero bearing on your ability to do your work. And just there's just nothing there that's going to be a game changer for anybody that I've seen so far. There's a, a dark mode which apparently is a really big deal, so that the whole overall theme of your computer is dark for using it in a dark room okay i guess but uh, i mean I, I haven't seen anything that's been a game changer yet so bottom line as we say every stinking year do not upgrade to Mo mojave <laughs> the next os when it comes out we're just now feeling pretty comfortable with high sierra which is version 10.13.5 Wow. Although, Dan, what's your little experience I, recently I don't know. with upgrading to... There was an upgrade yesterday, and suddenly I got the white screen of death. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, no. So it's like, okay, reboot it, go into, you know, and, and, and reload it. It's like, hold these two keys down. It will reload the, you know, the system, and it worked. And it's like, oh, I got my computer back. It's just not a warm and fuzzy feeling when that happens. No, <laughs> but I never panic because it's still easier to fix a, a Mac than it yeah, is a yeah. PC. When a PC goes bad, it's like... Uh, and by the way, we are not in a 7-Eleven. You may think we are, but we are not. No. For those that can hear we're, the beeping. We're in a subway station. <laughs> here, comes, here comes the 615. It has a it's, switch on it, doesn't it? It, it does. But. <laughs> um, it's the gate sound. It's the gate chime. Um, but anyway, the Mojave, yeah, not, not ready for prime time, not something you need. Um, I upgraded a client's computer from 10.13.3 to 4.0. 
5.4, just basically an integral, in, uh, little in update, seemed completely innocuous, and all of a sudden the monitor in his booth start, stopped working. So uh, the bottom line is, and this is the way I feel very strongly, unless it's a security update, like specifically about a security patch, it, if your computer is rock solid, it does what you need to do every day, it turns on, it works, and it's reliable, don't do an upgrade. Don't, don't do an upgrade and don't do an update either. Until that, we say so. Until, well, yeah, until, you, <laughs> until something is going on that's so annoying. They're going, I don't know what's going on here. I need to try something. Back it up. Make sure you have a backup and then install an update. Don't do it just as a matter of course. Well, they have a new update. It must be a fix. I've been doing this for years. I still stumble into that trap and then I end up having to fix the problem later avoid doing updates unless they're necessary yeah but wait let it burn in for a while right right okay um, uh, the audit id 20 everybody talks about this one it's what, yeah what's going on with them this is this unit really was my my go-to kind of high-end usb interface this was, this was their their first foray into making a usb interface this company super high quality preamps really clean uh, it's been, you know, loved and talked about by many voice actors and bloggers and things. But I, I have to say that as of late, um, you know, if one unit gets flaky, okay, one in 50 people, I kind of ignore it. Two, I get a little concerned. But I've, I've had three different people now with that unit now having erratic problems. And it's, it's of course, frustrating for them. Of course. I don't know if it's completely fair to call out audience and say that the product is not rock solid because it's been around for quite a few years now and it's been proven to be really reliable. Um, I will say that those that are having issues with the audience, I believe based on memory, all of them are using it on Mac. So I don't know if it's a Mac update issue it's doing it or what at this point, but um, I would say buyer be, beware with the audience ID 22. Um, it's not been quite as rock solid as, as we've remembered it to be. Um, I think their little brother, the little brother of the audience, ID22, which is the ID4, yep. much simpler. And why I like the ID4 is it doesn't have an on-screen software console to make your head explode. <laughs> These things can get really complicated. On, off, volume, that's all you need. Yeah, the, I have a client who, for a while there, I was putting these in in place of like a Mackie mixer. For people with ISDN, right? It, it does give you that extra ability to send audio to the ISDN box and then back or an old school phone patch, whatever this thing could do it, but it left him high and dry on Friday. Ooh. And it just was very frustrating for him. And I was the one having to troubleshoot it on the way to the airport at the airport, getting picked up at the airport. You know, it was just not fun. And we had to talk him through a backup. Unfortunately, he had an old Mackie mixer around and we were able to patch around the problem, but it's just, it's not something I'm feeling super uber confident about right now. So anyway, that's my little consumer uh, warning about that. Product. Consumer alert. Yeah. Just, just, just be a, have a spare. I guess the bottom line is no matter what it is you buy, have a spare on hand. Okay. You know, it's just, it's just good practice. Cool. Topic of discussion. Yeah. Let me throw it out there. See if it sticks against the wall. Um, since we're talking about walls here, sometimes there's a discussion of, should I be in a tiny little booth if I'm not claustrophobic or should I be in a larger room? And, you know, when I'm trying to decide, when someone's trying to decide where to put their home studio yeah. or perhaps relocate, uh, what works better acoustically? Mm -hmm. um, they both have very different demands. I find that, you know, if, if somebody only has a small space that they can isolate themselves like a closet or if they buy a booth, they've got to deal with that. Uh, but if you've got a large enough room, how is it that we can, you know, decide which is, which is the right room and then how do you treat it? And they, each room has a very different sound. A bigger room's going to have a slightly livelier sound. How do you look at that? I really like a bigger room. If you have the luxury of having a larger space that you can work in, that you still have control over the, the environment, yep. the isolation, the bigger room is great to have. And I think, I think Philip later can speak to this because I know he's working in a little bit larger room than like a little, you know, ISO box or something. He's working in a decent sized space. It's just so nice because you can work the mic at a, a further distance than you can get away with in a much smaller space. Right. If Dan and I were in a five by six room right now, 
we would not be able to work that far away from the microphone as we are here. Um, right. Our mic is just out of frame, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're well, getting a recross. Uh, there, there it is. <laughs> there it is. It's right there. You see how far away? You, you, in voice acting, if, unless you have a, we have a big room around us. We have a high ceiling. The room opens up around us and it's a, acoustically treated all around. If not for that, you wouldn't be able to work the mic that kind of a distance. And right. It's really nice being able to be this far away. You, you have a lot of flexibility in, in movement, and it feels more comfortable. So. And it's more conversational because it literally is more the distance to somebody's ear than if you're talking half an inch from it. And a lot right. of people tend to misuse that proximity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, unless, of course, they really like the sound of their voice that yeah. close up. And yeah. they're used to talking into people's ears. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's uh, it's all it's it's the amount of space between you, the mic, and then the mic and the walls and right, the ceiling. Right. You, when you have s several feet around all those parameters, it just you can open up your your placement and you can get more relaxed. It's really really nice to have. Cool. Well, how big is that room approximately? Uh, you're well, the one in? I'm building at Exceptional Minds. Yeah. Uh, it's seven and a half by seven and a half. Uh, that's that's and, like that borderline <laughs> between a small booth and a, and a right bigger enough booth. room for two or three people. And, uh, and we, we lucked out because the school had a bunch of room, you know, office room dividers Oh yeah. and we just ripped the, the metal frames off of them uh -huh. and just bolted them to the wall <laughs> and we were able to create the shape that I wanted. Nice. And now it's just going to go through, you know, the fine tuning of what's going to work in that room, but it's going to yeah. be really nice. And then the animation studio there will have a professional studio that they can use and cause they do br bring in important people. And uh, they work on projects. If you watch any big movie, especially a Marvel movie or something like that, yeah. and watch the end credits to the end, Exceptional Minds will come up because they're the guys that do all the credits for all these movies now. Oh, far out. So, uh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. It, is the room, uh, is the ceiling height in that room standard height? or is it No, it's a, it's a little higher and it's a drop ceiling. We're going to have to deal See, with the air conditioning noises and stuff. You know, yeah. And the way we'll do that is turn off the air conditioning. We're recording. Yeah. Yeah. You there's, know. there's. There are solutions that are less expensive than soundproofing your air conditioning. <laughs> right, usually exactly. Turning it off if you if you can if you can deal with the AC being off. Yeah. Sure. High ceilings are fantastic. I mean, the higher the better. Yeah. I mean, if you're stuck in a low ceiling space, sometimes the only solution for you is going to be to literally sit down. Yep. You, you have to drop the mic away from that ceiling. You know, we think about the walls, but sometimes we forget about the ceiling. The mic still picks up the ceiling as much as it does everything else. So drop the mic down, sit down on a high stool, whatever it is. But right. you, you'd be amazed at moving the mic from the ceiling about this much can make a really audible right. difference. Because you'll get comb filters off the ceiling and, and it's the proximity to a wall is very, very important. Yeah, comb filtering is that hollowy sound, that boxy sound right. we want to avoid. Right. All right. Enough tech for now? Sure. Okay. Right. Well, if you got a question, make sure you get it to us to, uh, the guys at VOBS.TV and uh, or in our chat room. And Jack Daniel is out there uh, taking everything we're saying and, and everything that you guys are saying in the chat room and throwing it to us. Yeah, tonight we're, we're getting Philip on in the next segment because it's really late for him. So we're going to get him in here. Yep. And then after he's done, we may have time. If you have a few, we may have time to throw a couple a few more tech questions, questions in there. In there so. Excellent. All righty. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Mr. Philip Banks joining us live from Scotland right after these important messages. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Yep. This is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Meow. <laughs> Snails like it too. Wow. This is VOB. Thanks for joining us once again for another episode of Voice Over Body Shop. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> Every Monday, 9, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voice over body shop. I love when they talk BS about you. Hey, what question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a fantastic answer for you. All you have to do is take VO2 
two go-go's free, free getting started in VO class. You heard right. It's free. It's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. You can see it right down there. If you've been watching VoiceOver Body Shop and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need. There's this like this thing and uh, all in one single comprehensive online class taught by VO to go goes David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Now, this class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, guess what? There's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Yes, you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Go there now. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. Right, They're not so built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. Oh, and it I takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All right, we're back. This guy is our next guest, a former investment director of a Swiss bank. Philip Banks is a professional voiceover talent based in Port Gordon, Scotland. Far, far away. In, in far, another time zone. In another, several time zones. Uh, he is the winner of the 2016 Vox Award for Best Male Voiceover Performance, a constant presence on the VOBB, we'll talk about that, and one of the UK's most talented voice talents, and a self-described tree stump. We'll have to ask him about that. Let's take a look at some of his work that you might actually recognize. At the height of the Cold War, a covert mission to save the children of Cuba. Don't worry, when Castro is gone, you're coming back. Exiled for their own protection. We were proud. We were here for a reason. Operation Peter Pan. It was real, it was not a movie. That's the day my childhood ended. Go inside extraordinary stories of survival and the quest for the American dream. Escape from Havana on CNBC. The world you've been waiting for is here. Come and live it. Amazing memories are within reach at a Universal Orlando Resort Hotel. Universal Orlando Resort. Vacation like you mean it. Inside the court of Henry VIII. He was brutal. He was ruthless. The virtue of ambition. You had to demonstrate that you were useful to the king. The art of seduction. She wanted to be queen. And the conviction of faith. He believed it was God's will. Only goes so far when a tyrant reigns. Inside the court of Henry VIII, Tuesday, April 7th at 9, 8 central, only on PBS. We're back and joining us from, <laughs> where is that? It's uh... Port Gordon, right? Thank you. Port Gordon, Scotland. <laughs> uh, this way. Gordon, That's right. Thank you. Port Gordon, Scotland. <laughs> uh, Philip. All right. <laughs> Welcome to a voiceover body shop. Thank you very much. I'm still awake, so this is good. Yes. Now, what exactly is it? Two a.m. in in Scotland. Uh, two twenty-five. Ah, uh, two twenty-five. Yes. Now, where? Now, where? This is right on the coast, right? You're like near a harbor or something. The, yeah. Um, when I finish this, I will be taking uh, the dog for a walk. A um, hundred yards behind me is the North Sea. Uh huh. Uh, and I can walk along the beach 
to Port Gordon Harbour, a mile around the block. Um, it'll take me about five minutes. And when I get to the harbour, I'll be able to hear the seals shouting at one another. Wow. That's, and, and of course, you probably get the winter storms there too, which are probably a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, sure. There's one occasion when, uh, uh, you know, my second car was literally snowed in for two months. <laughs> <laughs> two months. Two months. What the heck? Two it's like being two. in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, you're you're quite the mystery man, actually, to a lot of people. You're you're well known. Everybody sees you, you know, you're commenting on uh, a lot of the forums and stuff like that. Um but you're off there in the middle of, you know, off there in the by a harbor by the North Sea and away from the rest of us. Here in Southern California and uh, and the continental United States and Canada and Mexico and, you know, it's a corner of the world. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And, you know, we, we heard that you were originally an investment director of a Swiss bank. Um, so hiding people's money, apparently. Uh, but how did you get into... I know lots of guys called Scliomi. <laughs> how did you get into voiceover from, from doing that? I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh -oh. uh, a, a friend of mine was moving from one of the big BBC radio networks to commercial radio. And I was in London and the idea was to take her out for dinner. And how this woman ever made a living in radio, I never know, because she was late for everything. So I was actually dragged into this studio while these people, um, you know, the conference Fafcon, Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, 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 that comes from a, a, an English thing, faffing about. And they said, it means we're just goofing off and having faffing about is never a good thing. <laughs> and my, uh, my friend Alison would faff about and was late for everything. I was dragged into a studio while they were trying to make two promos, one for um, a jazz program and the other one was for streaming for folk music. And eventually I'm starting to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. So I start saying things with a view to getting kicked out. And I, I, because they were all sort of being all very precious and lovely about it, you know, they say, well, should we try this and should we try that? And I said, well, why don't you do this? And somebody literally threw a document at me and said, well, if you also, I won't use the exact phrase, but it was um, perhaps you'd care to try. But it was a slightly aggressive, uh, and me, I, <laughs> I just grabbed the thing and started reading. And BBC sound engineers are great. They, they, they don't care what's going on. They just see somebody sitting in front of the mic and say, can you give me sound for level, please? And so I started reading and my friend is staring daggers at me. And when I finished talking, this guy said, can you do this one while you're here? And when I left, uh, you know, my friend, apart from swearing at me and beating me in the arm, she said, uh, <laughs> Uh, she explained what voiceover work was all about. And I said, how do you do it? And she said, well, you make a demo and send it to everybody. So I took her half a day off of uh, work. And because I was, uh, it was a senior position, so you could just kind of vanish, providing you did your work. <laughs> uh, studio, I can tell you now, it was a music recording studio. Uh, it cost me 95 pounds, so about $135. I just recorded utter garbage. Uh, onto uh, an audio cassette and mailed the world in his wife. And there was a particular telephone approach that I used. I can remember calling people up, do you use freelance voiceovers? Uh, and the idea is, first rule of law, uh, never ask a question to which you don't already know the answer. So they would say, yes. Second question, <laughs> right. may, I send, may I send you a demo? And before they even had a chance to think, I always said, you're allowed to say no, by the way. And only one person in the few years that I did that ever said no to me um, because he wanted to book me. So, um, and that's how it started. So it's very, very random. Yeah. Um, uh, but, and then my part of the bank was bought out. And so I just sort of, I smiled and took their money. <laughs> and, and the rest is history, I guess. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's a very common story about a lot of people getting into voiceover. They're they're in the, you know, as you said, the wrong place at the wrong time, sometimes the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, they're, they're a writer or they're, you know, they're, they're like, yeah, you do it. And that was certainly the case with, with Don LaFontaine <laughs> when, right. when I guess Orson Welles didn't show up once or something like that. So <laughs> the story like goes, uh, but yeah, but if that situation comes up, if you don't know what to expect, I guess sometimes you can, 
<laughs> you know, you can do it right and they'll go, well, he's unaffected. <laughs> then that then that works. So. He's authentic. He's he sounds real. <laughs> Most yeah, unaffected thing. just means has no idea what he's doing. Yeah, well, there there's also that. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're you're very well known for expressing your opinion about things, um, and uh, on some of the various forums. What do you see since you've been doing? Uh, now, how long have you been doing this? How long has it been since that incident that dragged you kicking and screaming into our business? uh 28 years okay all right so you know what's going on you've seen the you've seen it change and you know from a you know from a perspective from across the pond from us but uh what do you see as some of the biggest issues in our industry today the the positive side is because there are more and more people trying to make a living um uh, doing voiceover work there is suddenly a flight to quality, which is why you'll notice the people who perhaps a few years ago were sort of getting by, you know, they were never going to be buying massive yachts, but it, things were fine. But what's happened now is because we've reached saturation point, um, you know, when you, when you saturate a sponge, drips start falling out. Uh, and so there's that flight to quality. That's the good side. Um, the downside is that there are an awful lot of people who honestly believe because they're doing something for say five dollars they do the arithmetic in their head and they just think well if i do 20 of these a day i can live off of twenty five thousand dollars a year that'll do me fine um uh, and so the, the 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 degree of separation between if you like the haves and the have nots is getting wider yeah clearly you know it's it economically i mean there's in the time that, you know, that I've started doing this, which was, you know, almost 20 years ago, I mean, prior in a radio career, but the thing is, is that we've seen with all these people coming in, we've also seen with the internet, a huge influx of work that didn't exist before. I mean, the idea of a home studio didn't exist 15 years ago. I mean, it was a few people that might have some real to real things and be able to do that, which is probably what you were doing. And, uh, it's it just changed very drastically about 15 years ago with you know with the online casting and such did you adopt that or did you stick with uh, doing mostly uh, your own marketing uh, pretty much I, uh, uh, the internet was an extension of my marketing uh, but one of the things you do is uh, the best way to stand out they say how can you stand out in a crowd and the trick is not to be in one and, and so so you can use internet uh, as part of your marketing but the, uh, the reason people spend so much time on marketing is because they hate the thought of spending time on sales with marketing you can just say well i've got market penetration or i've got exposure or i've got likes on my facebook page or i've got followers on twitter but it's actually turning that into dollars so if you if people change their focus from marketing to generating sales that's actually a terrifying transition because your sales efforts are measurable you know that's why uh, ceos get a, an obscure performance bonus whereas the sales staff get commission on sales uh, i remember one company when i started off in investment management the uh, the broader company encompassed uh, a, a direct sales force guys basically sold life insurance and the top salesman for uh, the life insurance division actually earned more money than the CEO of the entire group. He was good. <laughs> he was good. So, so the internet is a good thing. That, you know, one of the things that lots of VOs do is they will join every single, um, if you put a line of paper clips on someone's desk and a voiceover walk past, they would just join them. <laughs> Uh, and it's, uh, the idea of the internet is to be found somewhere, not to be found everywhere. Because what you tend to do, you know, people say it's great for SEO, but unfortunately for the people who think like that, the people who design the internet, they have the bots, et cetera, that are actually smarter than the people who do the SEO. Right, um, yeah. They're always a step ahead of 
the SEO people yeah. pretty much. Right? Absolutely right. So the thing to do is just make sure that you can be found somewhere because uh, by make, being found everywhere, all you do is just devalue the currency. Hmm. Interesting, interesting point. Yeah, you know, I don't think a lot of people think about that. But then again, a lot of people in this business aren't thinking about anything except I want to be a voice actor. And, you know, and I think in there lies the problem. We have such an influx of people. Um, and as you said, you know, the, the quality is, is, is probably dropping off at the edges there. Uh, is the influx of talent outpacing the influx of, of work. work? Yeah. And I say talent, meaning people who actually know what they're doing. Right, right. What do you I, I did a, a test earlier on uh, this week. I bought uh, a shotgun mic, and it's one of those, it looks exactly the same as uh, 416. And uh, I plugged it into my equipment, and if I could have got a screen print out, it would have said, what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> And, and do you know what it is? You know, this microphone, you know, that's just a tin shell. Uh, but it's everything that's going on inside, and people just don't seem to get that. The conversation you were having about rooms, uh, I'm amazed how often uh, when, you know, people are sending me audio, I can hear the room. Uh, and the rooms should be invisible. Unless you, do you know what it is? You can, you can put reverb on a voice if you need that effect. But um, I mean, you guys are the sound experts. Is there any successful way of removing reverb from a recording? I've never heard of it. Once it's there, it's, yeah. there forever. <clears throat> it's, a, it's in the works. Isotope has a, uh, I believe, a D reverb and a Waves does. But they, they can maybe soak up some of the echo. You know, if it's recorded in like a, a cathedral or something it can soak up some of that but what it can't do is deal with those comb filter early ref the things we were talking about the things right. that make a room sound hollow or colored those tools can't deal with that right so yeah you can't fix it in the mix yeah it's always it we always say fix it physically yeah. do whatever you can to make the room like you said invisible and uh so Again, if somebody wants to add reverb to it or something like that, that's the engineer's job. That's not our job as voice actors. Uh, and we're not supposed to be engineers. It's supposed to be simple and easy and hit record and go. And the room shouldn't become a factor. And you should never use filters to try and futz with it. Yeah. Unless it's interesting. You know, I don't know if you've ever noticed people when they post videos or pictures. You can always tell the guys who are X radio. Who have just moved into voiceover because their voiceover booth looks like the last radio station they worked at <laughs> with an re20 so and... true They'll have a, uh, <laughs> yeah, a yeah. tube whereas, this people, and... whereas actors um the, the reason uh they have to study um is obviously to get into a part but the other advantage is they learn to pay attention they listen and so therefore they don't care whether it's pretty or not they just listen to the guy. When I, when I set up uh, here, a guy, he uh, Classic FM is one of the big national stations over here, and he built their studios. And I said, this is what I'm doing. I'm moving up to Scotland. What do I need to do? And he said, um, first, he said, buy the best microphone you can't afford. <laughs> and uh, at the time, and he literally pointed at one of these. Uh, and I, had no, I said, well, I better write it down. And I forgot. But he then said, make sure that the room sounds perfect. Um, so, uh, you know, they always say, you talk to any stuntmen in the movies, and the first thing a stuntman will say, you know, you say, how do you keep yourself safe? How do you make sure things work? And they say, surround yourself with experts. Absolutely. You know, anybody, you know, anybody who doesn't, uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing sound-wise. I have no idea, which is why I make the call or I send the emails out to people. And, you know, it's just say, you know, help checked to follow <laughs> that's what we like to hear <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what what are you using in there obviously you've got a, a nice u87 there which is you know the mic that you know the best mic most people can not afford but uh but it you know it helps because it take it it creates some problems and it also you know solves a few problems but uh what have you what's your chain there what are you what are you running that you can actually describe to us um, I, I mean, this one's just out in the office, but I have, uh, this is uh, literally U87. And in that side of me, there is actually the voiceover booth. In there is a U87 AI. 
um, because of where I am, uh, it, the conversation we're having about kit, have a spare. Oh, absolutely. Think, for me, you know, it's a problem. If my either of these mics go wrong, it's going to take, I mean, you tend to have these repaired, uh, but if you needed a new bike, mic, it's going to take two days to get to me. That's a very um, costly time period to be not working. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. So, um, but the, um, I'm sending you, if it's a clean feed. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there, you know, there's no, uh, um, you know, $20,000 tube pre, you know, followed by um, um, a, a thing with streams that does stuff. It, it, you know, it's just a clean feed. My view, you know, if I hand you a coffee and say, uh, look, I wasn't sure whether you took cream and sugar, so I just put half some cream and two sugars. You can always lift it out with a spoon. Right. <laughs> that's, that's a good that's way to a describe good it. analogy. I yeah. like that. <laughs> and also, ignorance is bliss. You know, if somebody said to me, well, can you, uh, uh, can you gate it at 5 dB? I have no idea what they just said to me. <laughs> Why would you gate uh, it at that 5 dB? Right. You know, which also means they don't know what they're talking about either. Uh, no, so anyway, some, you know, some weird stuff, and, I, and it's exactly you know the questions people ask you. Just say, okay, we know where we are. You're just. Uh, I was once uh, at um, an airport, and a guy had just passed his private pilot's license, and I made a comment that one particular airline had changed aircraft, and this guy wanted to fly the seven thirty seven when he grew up, but they just changed to Airbus. Um, and this guy just looked and he said, well, and he said, it depends on the cost code of those aircraft. And I looked at it in his instructor and the, his instructor said, oh, that's just a piece of jargon he's picked up. And I always remember that now that, you know, when people say, what did the guy say when he said, you know, you know, can you double, uh, you know, double gate your upstream and check your board rates? It's just a piece of jargon he's picked up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I find that you know, and and I was I, I was discussing this on Facebook this morning because somebody had asked a question about a microphone or something along those lines, and people start to come in with, oh well, this is my chain, and I've got this, and I've got that, and finally I'd had enough, and I said, look, people ask you for the time, you don't need to tell them how to build a watch, and uh, it's it's pretty important that people ask the people who know what to do, as you said, hire an expert and. You know, and that's what we do, and that's why we do this show. And if you're just joining us, our guest is the one and only Philip Banks, who is joining us uh, from Scotland, all the way from, you know, all the way across the pond and then the other side of England, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then uh, if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room. And I know Jack Daniel is in there typing furiously away with all the questions we have for Philip and, uh, and for us. And uh, he will get that to us, and we will relay that question to him, and Philip will answer that question. i got to make a shout-out. Go for it. To the voiceover bulletin board people. Well, we were going to talk a, about the VOB. Big community we're going to talk about, but there's a number of people in the chat room tonight that um, I know I've known from that community now for, I don't know, I've maybe been on there eight or nine years now. It's, longer, it's longer than that. It's been around <clears> for a long time since... Uh, you know, since uh, she started that. Cool to see a lot of you in here. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people know you from the VOBB. When did you start, uh, you know, bopping into there and, and, and telling people what you think? Uh, it was, I'm guessing, 2004, something like that. Uh, and it was really uh, about the, I know what I don't know. And so I just needed people who knew what they were doing. What was interesting is what you do to identify yourself. Um, uh, the trend now is people post in the critique forum for their demo feedback and then just go. Um, but the idea is to just say, look, this is who I am. This is what I do. And I can remember um, just being made to feel singularly unwelcome. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, people were sort of coming up with all this stuff, you know, so the, the, the thing to do is you just make a joke. Uh, and people say, well, he's arrogant. And I just think, you know, and it's one of those things where you just say, no, you're allowed to laugh, guys. Um, but I just thought, okay, that's fine. Um, and I remember sending an email to uh, D.B. Cooper and just said, if you want to remove me, that's fine. I won't be the least bit offended. And because of that, my reaction, you know, Deep said, no, you're probably okay if you said that. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. but isn't it funny there are some people who uh, um 
I'm always suspicious of people with weird screen names because uh, uh, the internet is the perfect hiding place for people. Yes. Uh, yeah. I've, I've met certain people, you know, so, you know, it's like, Philip, you know me from the VOBB. Um, and there's this guy, he's like four foot two, 32 pounds soaking wet, cowering in a corner. But, you know, his screen name is Big Dave 86. And he's one of those, you know, it's, oh, I'll kick your butt for you talking to me. Uh, and he said, uh, when you actually meet him in a bar, all you can hear is, help me. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so, you know, that's why if I ever join um, a, a website, I just put Philip Banks. It's not self-promotion. It's just that, you know, I, I don't like the idea of the internet being, you know, I respect people's privacy, but I don't like it being a hiding place for people. Um, yeah. You know, because it does actually create barriers. As you know, people who work remotely, you know, sometimes you don't even speak to clients. Um, it's nice to actually, if you've got a problem, you know, just pick up the telephone and talk to them. Um, so you know, we're, we're, we need to not dehumanise people. Um, and also, it, it, the VOBB is a great way of challenging the cheerleaders. Um, and it, it's it's just to say, I mean. There's a, a, a comedian called Harry Enfield, and he did a show, and he used to uh, um, poke fun at the Liverpudlians. And the Liverpudlian people, people from Liverpool, uh, are very fiery, so as they can actually be losing their temper at one moment, uh, and then your best friend literally in a breath. And part of a sketch would be, you know, these guys would be around, and then the Liverpudlians would be like, calm down, calm down, calm down. Um, and it's nice to be able to say to some of you, sort of shaking their fist and say, just calm down, calm down. I don't know if you've noticed how many cheerleaders there are um, in the voiceover industry, um, but nobody's actually said to them, we don't have a football team, guys. Hmm. Hmm. So it's like, you know, yay, go. Nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's I, I, I have in good intelligence, good intel here, that you have been on that uh, amazing website since 20th of June, 2005, and you've posted 9,521 yeah. times, which is a total 3.91% of all posts Dos ever Dos posted on the VOD. <laughs> so I think you might That's be a as busy as everybody says. <laughs> I think you might be a shareholder <laughs> at the VOVV at this point. But. Really? Yeah, but it just the just the profile though. I mean, this would throw a lot of people. This is occupation. Voiceover, glamour model, tree stump. See, I did do my homework. That's right. You know, interests, world domination, voiceover, kittens and fluffy bunnies. Yes. <laughs> And obviously, he hasn't changed it in at, years. At least we know he's normal. Yes. Yeah, he, he's one of us. <laughs> I'm one of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what are what were some of the topics that you you, you can remember discussing on there? Um, Out of the uh, 9,000 posts that you did. Oh, for, I get, uh, it really, for me, it was just getting up in the morning. Um, and to get my brain in gear, uh, I would just randomly write something. And sometimes people would buy into it. Otherwise, you know, uh, Liz Donation is a great one. For, my phone will ring. And she, Hi, honey. What are you doing now? So, um, but the big pay to play one, uh, you know, that, that was you know, kind of the story of the decade, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and everybody was shaking their fist at one another. And I, I was aware that, uh, you know, sort of any event, um, that people want to influence in the USA involves people parking their car one side of Washington and marching across to the other side and back again. You know, and so that was a blow for freedom, wasn't it? Been there, um, done that. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've all done it. It was just, we can walk up to the White House and go, Grr. can we go now? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, 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 you know, the people the other side of the border from you, you know, sort of everybody painted the picture of them being uh, the spawn of Satan. Uh, and, uh, and, and you know, but, but guilty as charged, I think. But it's one of those things. It's, you know, you can't just sort of, sort of shout to them and say you're you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that. It's, uh, you know, it's a bit like the, um, you know, having pity on Goldman Sachs. You know, bless. You know, so but but have another bonus. You'll be fine in the morning. Um, and. This is when the voiceover you, uh, industry unites to do absolutely nothing except shout at one another. Uh, and you just got to say, no, guys, what you've actually got to do is 
if every one of us just sort of stood up and said, no, here I am, you can't find me in Canada or um, uh, uh, Ireland or wherever it might be. Uh, if, if you ever watch, um, do you have the Dragon's Den in the US? Or the equivalent of the Dragon's Den? Uh, no I idea so. what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay, but uh, uh, CEOs from various companies meet people with business ideas. Um, and they present the business ideas, and the people will, t uh, the, the, the so called dragons will take a stake in the business. Uh, and there's, um, so, one like a Shark Tank. I, I, I guess it would be, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, because that's, you know, snappier name, you know, so we Brits come up with, you know, so it, it's like when we came up for uh, a, a title for our news show, we called it The News. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> creativity. Yeah. Uh, but I actually saw one of the people who runs one of these pay-to-play websites, uh, a, a voiceover related thing, and they were presenting it to these dragons, and it was the Irish version of, of Dragon's Den. What became perfectly clear throughout the entire presentation, the people who owned the pay-to-play site didn't know what they did, and neither did the dragons. Fascinating. <laughs> True. <laughs> and I wonder who that was. Anyway. <laughs> If you're just joining us once again, we're talking with Philip Banks uh, from Port Gordon, Scotland, who stayed up late, late, late tonight or got up very, very early uh, to talk to us here on VoiceOver Body Shop. If you've got a question for him, get it in the chat room and uh, we will get that to him. But right now we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So do not go away. Don't go away. Okay. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. All righty. Well, this is usually my spot. It's your spot. Because it's source elements. But I got involved this That's week. That's right. Because we want to do a little like sort of commercial slash testimonial, right? For right. Exactly. A product from source elements called Vizdin. And um, Source Connect was the tool of the day that we were telling everybody to get and we still believe it's still very popular it's gaining in popularity but there's this interesting other thing using the internet but it also uses your ISD. good old zephyr mm -hmm. or whatever you have sitting at home which these things are now very inexpensive on ebay um under 500 even under 200 wow. <laughs> so you can now connect your existing or maybe something you found on ebay ISDN box, like your Zephyr Extreme or whatever, to the internet. And uh, here to tell us about a real world situation without naming any specific names, I think. Well, you can mention the name. Oh, we can just we, not where he, that okay, name is. We're going to drop a name. <laughs> Dan, drop the name. Who is the guy that you set this up for and, and how is it working? Uh, Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Of all people. Yeah. No, I got called in on a consult and they were having a, a lot of trouble with his, uh, his home setup. Uh, were, you know, because he also does the radio show for, for CBS and the AT&T line wasn't working. And when it would rain things, and it was just not working. And I'm like, flaky, why don't you guys consider an, you know, a, an, an IP solution to this? Yeah. Like source connect. Yeah. And they're like, what's that? And I'm right. like, come on now. So it, we, uh, I, I said, look, if you need to have ISDM because they wanted something completely simple. That was like you know, familiar, that, right? Like dialing a phone. Not, they don't even have to dial it. Right. Just at a certain time, they're going to call it. And Auto dial, and the mic's beep, there, beep. and and Doctor Phil is you know going on like, the other side. I don't trust what you're doing here. I don't think that's a good idea. Right. But uh, or whatever he does on his <laughs> on his radio show, and uh, but 
made it simple and they they said okay we'll do that and we got the box i just plugged it in and boom nice and they're like trouble free it's stable it works that's fantastic and that's and and of course yes and hopefully they will refer me to other people but <laughs> that's what you want thank do. you for letting us know about source connect and visdn or visdn or whatever they are calling it because mm -hmm. now dr phil is using it and if dr phil is using it anyone anybody can use it yeah i mean this this is the kind of tech that the the top voice brass as i like to say dream of because they don't want to have a computer in the middle of the midst of this thing even though we know that inside the zephyr is a little tiny computer it's a one job box and it does that one job extremely well you know and it hasn't been updated in 15 years <laughs> there's no good not going to be any os update that's going to break it it's right. just going to keep on working until it doesn't and so this is a great tool so visdn you can go give it a try over at source-elements.com and while you're over there if you've never been over there at least sign up for an account and get source connect now absolutely I mean, that's totally free it's you might as well free get it. so anyway there's our little spot for source elements i hope All you right. guys watch this source <laughs> elements this was a really good commercial <laughs> All right, we'll be right back with Philip Banks. Stay tuned. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect i grew up with the classics and now with StubHub, i can get authentic tickets to the best shows the all-new chevy cruise from 16.995 be inspired then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at sephora this week at home depot it's our garden fest sale with up to 30 percent off all garden tools sod and seeds hi it's j michael collins and these are just a few examples of the first class demos my team and i are producing if you'd like to have something similar visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the demo production tab to find out more and we're back with philip banks joining us from port gordon scotland and it's a pleasure to have you with us. And he doesn't even look remotely tired. Nope. He looks just the way he does at all time of day. Yes. It's See, like a bomb villain, <laughs> <laughs> So, but, you know, being where you are and all the work, and we showed, you know, some of the stuff on your reel earlier in the show, uh, you're doing stuff in North America and you're probably doing stuff in the Far East because there's always a demand for a British sounding voice that's actual because... Brits can do American accents, but Americans just cannot seem to fake a British accent. I don't know what it is. So you're you're you keep a probably a pretty w weird schedule, I would imagine. Yeah, it can be very uh, um, disruptive, but it does mean that you'll sometimes find me walking the dog at six in the morning. But equally, you'll find me walking at one in the morning. Uh, if, over here, if you are in one of the major soaps, say Coronation Street or EastEnders. You've got a, a UK TV audience of 10 million people and you're famous. I've got a worldwide TV audience of about 300 million people and I'm nobody. Um, and that's just fine, you know, because these people, you know, can't take the trash out without the paparazzi leaping out of the trash can. You're going to smile. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, um, you have to manage your sleep and you'll notice behind me sort of a big sort of L-shaped couch. And... Uh, nap time is great it really is um and my thanks to uh bob Sauer for reminding me that you can <laughs> sort of, um, at some time you can, i mean he, you talk to him and you just realize you're napping bob you're not listening to me so but you know a 20 minute nap really can uh rejuvenate you uh or and you know, the other thing i have beside me which you can't see i've got a row machine uh and so i regularly row about I, you know, I do a 10k row every day uh, when I'm out with Bess, the border collie. I have to run with her as well. Fantastic! Uh, it is a border collie yeah. after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, a you know, a 10k run for Bess. She's just thinking. And um, <laughs> but she, she, if I'm running, she runs in front of me, but looking back at me, barking, uh, and she won't stop barking until I'm running fast enough. She's hurting you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the running term is near-death experience. <laughs> but 
I'm the typical old guy, you know, so, you know, I've noticed the cheekbones are rematerializing, the leg muscles are great, but, you know, I still look like I've swallowed a beach ball. So, uh, <laughs> so, but I, I keep teasing people in the village, just saying, you know, sometime in a few years' time, people are going to find my lifeless corpse on an old railroad line that runs into the village, and they're going to look down and say, yeah, but doesn't he look well? <laughs> Exactly. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, that's what we're all hoping. You're going to fall off a mountain on that bike of yours one of these days. But uh, So let's get back to talking a little bit about voice over here. What, what do you think has helped you the most, aside from having a fabulous voice? Which, and, you've under, and you understood because when you first started out, you were just being you. And, and you obviously continued to just be you. There are some people in this business, and I think it was uh, our guest last week uh, who was saying there are just some people who are naturally born to do this, and all the studying in the world that you can do, you're not going to be able to to do what they do because God graced you with such a great voice. And uh, but what has worked for you, you know, professional? What sort of things have you learned to even make that better? Uh, it's lose the affected style. It, it, it gets back to what you're saying about be you. Um, there is, a, a, I had a, um, a BBC reporter here, um, I think it was the Friday before last, they were doing something about me on network radio, which was, was kind of relevant to a, a, a talk show. And she said, can you just introduce yourself? She wanted to obviously take some um, uh, level from me. So I just said, you know, uh, I'm Philip Banks, I live in Port Gordon. And that's all I said. Uh, and she said, uh, because she put her headphones on and put a mic in front of me, uh, she said, oh, you just went into voice, your voice over voice. <laughs> I, said, no. I said, you just pointed a microphone and put your headphones on. So you were hearing it differently. But I did explain that, you know, there are some people who, uh, because they get very, very affected. Uh, I, I once was speaking to somebody from McCann Erickson, and I referred to a particular radio station and their commercial production department. And this guy said, oh, yeah, they use people who can't talk properly. <laughs> and that was it. He dismissed an entire roster of voiceovers. And uh, if you just find a mood and hold it, it's still you. Uh, I, I, I gave the example, um, you know, the sales commercial, I, you know, I've done, you, um, the organized crime run furniture stores, because if you ever notice, whatever sale they've got on, the lowest price for a three piece suite is always 399. There was one guy in New York who tried to push them out for 395 and they found them floating down the river the following day. <laughs> With cement shoes. You know, it was, you know, yeah. Mr. Scleone needs a void. And, uh, uh, but with those, you know, so everything is 399. And when I was talking to this producer, I said, now, can you imagine this scenario? It, you know, just shouting at people about furniture and getting very excited about it for 29 seconds for a TV commercial. It sounds weird. I said, now, here's a scenario where you find that mood. Imagine uh, guys walking out uh, past a jewelry store with his girlfriend, and then he proposes to her. So, will you marry me? And Julie said, yeah, I'd be delighted to. Uh, and, and she said, I've got to go back to work now. And so he walks calmly to his best friend's house, opens the garden gate, taps gently on the door, waits for his friend to answer the door. His friend answers the door. He said, hello, how are you? He said, well, I just have some news for you. Julie's agreed to marry me. But of course, that's not what happened at all. She agreed to marry him. He walked around the corner. When she was out of sight, he ran at 400 miles an hour to his friend's house, leapt over the garden gate, as he knocked on the front door, he opened, it, turned the handle, burst into this guy while this guy's watching sports on TV. And he looks and he, what's wrong? And he went, Julia agreed to marry me. Now, if you actually just take that sentence, Julia agreed to marry me to three P suites, all now, 399. That's how you just simply find the mood. Now, that's not me affecting a voice. That's just me after three espressos. <laughs> That is quite the backstory. Wow. <laughs> yeah, how long's this show? Sorry, <laughs> that's that's but pretty good. We have a peanut gallery, by the gallery. Uh, yeah, all yes, the yeah. By the way, Mark Cashman has waltzed into our studio to this afternoon, <laughs> and uh, it's always great to see. I haven't seen him in a while, but uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Mark. It's great thanks to have you. Thanks for having me. All right, it's great having you in here. One of the well, things I, I I know you from Phil is conferences. Uh, I, I get the feeling that perhaps you, you've probably soured on them a little bit yourself, but I can remember 
you know, us being at a dinner at a conference and you came in in full Scottish regalia. Uh, was, yes, that was um, Voice 2010. 2010, yes, in, yeah. uh, in Los, here in Los Angeles. And I'm like, I was impressed, you know, that you would come in and, 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 and do that. What, what prompted you to do that? Or is that just formal attire in your, in, in your uh, world? That is formal attire. And, uh, and I was married at the time. And my uh, ex-wife is a Sutherland. Uh, and that was the formal Sutherland um, <clears throat> clown attire. You know, so that's the formula. You know, there are, you know, casual kilts that you would wear just, you know, to, to out, go out for a walk. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but that's the, you know, that's the full dress thing. Interesting. So, never, never been, you know, I'm, I'm not like Shane. I'm not, you know, Monk, you know, who wears, wears the kilts too. Got a neighbor that wears a kilt too, which is kind of weird. But. Something just sparked in my brain. Phil, go for it. Philip, do you remember sending a big pink duffel covered in owls full of candy to the u.s do you remember doing this uh yeah vaguely was it for an uncle roy barbecue perchance uh yeah it was yeah that's that's exactly what it was i was yeah, at yeah, that yeah. barbecue yeah that's and... right it was the, it was the um scottish stroke um, um british candy fest yes a huge <laughs> duffel and yeah. what's funny was that bag at the end of the party or near the end, you know, there was the bag and they were wondering what to do with it, you know? And I was like, my daughter is going to love that bag. <laughs> and to this day, that is my daughter's favorite bag for coming to dad's house on the weekends and traveling. That That's her bag now. So I think I'm delighted get... to hear it because I was kind of wondering whether it was going to be disowned. No. <laughs> <laughs> He was able to get rid of it and made good use of it. <laughs> she loves it and it stands out like on the on the belt, you know. It's, I mean, it it is not mistaken for any other bag, so it lives on. I thought you'd like to know. It, it lives on, uh, and there are now more sugar addicts in the US than there are in the UK. Thanks to, <laughs> thanks to one barbecue. I mean, you're supposed to be eating half a cow, really, aren't you? And so I'm thinking. Um, tonics, wafers, and goodness knows what else. Oh, man. Yeah. So getting back to conferences, uh, are, have you been to many conferences in the past couple of years? No, no. It's um, uh, about, it's, it's interesting that, that we've just had a big one in the UK. Oh, the Vox, right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, oh, no, um, it was uh, the, uh, the the Gravy for the Brain one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Gravy for the Brain one. And it, it, it's interesting that people just go, this is awesome, this is great, this is fantastic. And then Two days later, if you look at social media and you're know, waiting for the success stories, tumbleweed. <laughs> Crickets. Uh, yeah. Sure. And, and it was interesting that that particular weekend, um, myself and a very good friend who both work for one particular company jumped on an airplane uh, on the Friday, flew out of the country, uh, took the senior management and the producers for this particular company out to dinner, and we just split the cost between us. And I had an email from uh, Ellie uh, two days later just saying, I've just been asked to do this and it's one of their huge jobs. And she covered her costs in one. And they can um, be good for that. Sure, sure. And so, you know, while everybody was at a conference patting each other on the back, we were just, you know, kind of doing the let's work for a living thing. Um, and I always say, you know, if people are, if, it, if somebody's in a room with a coach or at the end of a line with a coach and the coach say, you need to be able to do this. I would say, uh, how does that work? Give me the success story. Uh, and it's amazing how many coaches, you know, from both of them, in fact, probably, uh, uh, you know, who did, uh, it's that lovely word, <laughs> uh, because you need to, uh, 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 I said about this um, company that I used to work for, um, talking to some of their um, top salespeople, they would just say, well, I heard about this idea for tax planning. I went to see some of my clients um, and there was one guy who was telling me that because he was doing so well, he actually increased his target so he didn't have to give his secretary a bonus. And this was in June of that year. And he said to me, now bearing in mind, this is about 1982. Uh, he said, so far, I said, my secretary is on, um, I'll put it in dollar terms, is on a $54,000 bonus. 
and, and all this guy did was, uh, and, you know, if I tell people, because um, uh, occasionally people say, yeah, how, how does this work? You know, can we do this and can we do that? And I said, well, the last time I did this, it resulted in this. And then that, you know, sort of paid the mortgage or paid off the mortgage. You know, people always sort of, there's no such thing as a buyout. A buyout means that somebody owns your work. Nobody can own your work. They can put it down on paper and get to sign all sorts of documents. They do not own your work. Um, residuals are, or royalties or um, repeats, as we call them in the UK, are the best New Year present you can get, particularly if you had a, um, if you celebrate Christmas, if you've had an, ex, you know, an expensive Christmas. The commercial that uh, you showed, uh, I think it was for the Harry Potter one. Uh, I think it was January. Um, uh, they ran it for four or five days of the Christmas New Year period. And my agent in the US sent me a check. And, um, you know, it, it was five figures. And, you know, it's kind of it was the dire straits on money for nothing in your drinks for free. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you if you do a buyout for somebody or just saying yes you can own my work basically what you're doing is you're selling your pension to someone or you're selling your children's inheritance oh, one or, way to look at it yeah yeah, yeah. That's right. you know i just pre-buy massive yachts every couple of weeks we we have a pile of questions from our massive audience it was spread out across the globe. Philip uh, fans. Phil fans who knew you were coming, saw our promo and said, wow, we got to be there for this. Uh, starting okay. off. Both of them. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Paul Stefano asks, Philip, how do you feel about whisper rooms? Uh, they don't do what they say on the box. <laughs> that's probably true or on the tin as you say over there yes <laughs> yeah 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 that's right it's, it's they they don't work you can actually build something um for about 20 percent of the cost of a whisper room which will be 10 times more effective that's true um mr whitham here's a multiple part question yeah so you, get, you get you get the second part yeah. uh also how do you feel about voice actors promoting themselves on Facebook or other social media? That is something you did address quite a bit, which is don't be everywhere, but be present in a particular specific yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And most of the people, they're just talking to other voiceovers. And I'm not sure, uh, I, I once said to um, uh, on somewhere quite recently, <clears throat> I don't know anybody uh, who would ask uh, a guy on the street for advice on how to become a millionaire and really promoting yourself on certain social media is, 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 is you, know, I, you know i've just done this is awesome and people say so have i uh, got any work today I say no i'm on facebook if i was busy i wouldn't be on facebook mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of that yeah uh, he also says thanks for showing us the real you um, he says as much as i love your v-o-b-b -B shenanigans the real you is much more charming so Paul says thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He still needs to send me his PayPal address. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Daniel asks, do you have a regular vocal warm up and would you mind sharing it with us? No. I figured that was going to be the answer to that. <laughs> See that no, one coming I, a no, mile I, away. The way I sound, uh, uh, the only thing I have to be very cautious of uh, is sounding too dark. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you know so sometimes you just try and it's, it's a bit like it sounds like a joke you know, but you think of kittens <laughs> you know, just you know they're, 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 i sell in two marketplaces um uh, you know there's the one you know, i used to be the voice of the horror channel with good reason <laughs> yeah uh, i was once in a, a, the big supermarket chain over here was tesco and i was in tesco in Elgin on one occasion and all the kids uh, would come out from school rather than have the school lunches. They'd just go and buy donuts and things. But in the upper floor, they have all the TVs and hi-fi. There are about 30 school kids um, looking at TV and they're playing with the channels and they get to the horror channel. And um, the Scottish accent, and, and, and they have certain things up here. Next time you guys meet, don't say hello, how are you? Just go, fit like Maloon, which is Doric, which is the regional dialect up here. You know, which basically, you know, you know, what are you like, my friend or my lad? Fit like Maloon. Um, <laughs> but, seriously, but these guys, uh, young kids were watching, and one of the kids 
as I was wheeling my trolley uh, or cart behind them, uh, the, 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 the horror channel's going and there's a promo playing. And this kid uh, was telling to his friends and basically saying, this is scary. This is the words he used to just say, this is a very scary TV uh, channel. He went, oh, this is mental spooky. <laughs> and, and as I walked past them, I, all I said was, even spookier than you think. <laughs> And I think they're still standing there. <laughs> <laughs> You're just thinking, we're not moving. Because you know, they, they say, they, he can't see you uh, if you don't move. And one of them is saying, Ewan, he's not a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun, isn't it? Um, Todd Ellis and Melissa Exelberth want to know, where's Bess? They want to see your, your border collie. I'm sure... She's probably asleep, asleep right? <laughs> like most dogs are. I, I, I think she's asleep upstairs. Um, and, and when when she hears me stop talking, and, and she will hear a particular click of a switch, and then she'll come down the stairs, and then we have to go around the harbour. Oh, nice. But funnily nice. enough, if I'm doing a, uh, a Skype session with Melissa and I've got the speaker side, Melissa will get one sentence into the conversation <laughs> and message in the room. Oh, I love it. So, because so, Bess has photographs, that, um, 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 uh, you know, her and Melissa, because Melissa came over, I can't remember if it was last year, so I just spent time in Port Hall. Just couldn't believe it's cold, isn't it? Oh, yeah. How oh, nice. Um, um, Mo, uh, Maxine Dunn says, hello, dear Philip. This is a wonderful, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm curious if you go on holiday... And if you do, do you have a real holiday or do you make it a working holiday and take equipment with you? And if no, you do take equipment, what do you take? Uh, it, that's a serious question. The equipment I take is an A320. Uh, <laughs> uh, my last month, uh, my, uh, my, my Christmas vacation was basically spent flying out of Reykjavik in Iceland. And I thought, this is great, I'm going to get to see Iceland. So my first trip was to New York, and then we flew down to San Francisco and back again. Just thanks, guys. Holy um, cow. So, um, uh, but it meant well, I burned up all my flying hours. Uh, I don't fly, it's not my job. It's just I've got the right license for doing it. So there's an agency who very kindly, when they know that I need money for my training budget and to keep my hours up, they just find me stuff to do. Um, <laughs> is that right? Seriously. <laughs> seriously, okay. Yeah. So, so uh, to answer the question, do do you find yourself having to work on a vacation, or can you really, can you really take no, a vacation? I, uh, I, I don't go. If you, if you think where I live, I don't. You know, I'm sort of permanently on vacation. Yeah. Um, but but if I go away, then I am away, and I just let people know. You know, I'm not going to be around for five days, ten days. Um, I think it was two Christmases ago. I spent. Uh, I flew over to LA. <clears throat> and on the 20, uh, we call it Boxing Day. You call it the 26th of December. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I met up with um, Bill Rogers and his wife, Camille. And I spent Christmas and New Year with them. Uh, because on New Year's Eve, while everybody else was basically letting off fireworks that they'd smuggled in from Nevada, um, we were, uh, Bill, me and Camille were in their kitchen making Cullen Skink which is a local fish recipe and um, you can google it if you like smoked fish it's awesome it really is good. so no um when i'm working i'm working when i'm uh, when i'm on holiday or when i'm on the day off then i'm not there are occasions where um i will always try and make myself aware of where there's a a, a local studio because there could be you know the job of the decade comes up uh and so you might need, you know, if you're on an island somewhere, you just fly to another island or take a boat to another island and then just do it somewhere. Um, it's always a good test of your career. Um, have a day away from the office, accept every single job and hire a studio to do that job in. And if you can't afford to pay the studio, you're not charging enough. <laughs> good point. That's a whole other topic I, we will not get into, but the fact that voice actors give their studios away for everything they do is kind of a... Yeah, really. yeah, I mean, you know how much these cost. Um, and, you know, you've got to earn the money before you buy it. Either that or frighten the life out of your credit card company. Yeah, well, as, as we like to say, you don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Sure. So, yeah. 
Um, got time for a few more questions here. One from Joy Baker. This is a great question. What's the best and worst direction you've ever been given? And are they different? <laughs> <laughs> are they different? <laughs> Uh, uh, there was one funny enough I mentioned that uh, earlier when we were talking uh, I did a, a TV commercial which ran I think it's 48 countries for um, a, a, a company called Blooper and there was so much money riding on this the creative director from the agency which is terrifying um, which is not uh, a, a, you know, a, a good place to be and there was three words that, that linked to uh, li linked some uh, sequence of pictures. And she spent five minutes explaining how I should deliver these three words. So uh, we did a take again. Um, and she went, uh, okay, Philip, can I say something else? And I said, no, just listen. And the director, the picture director was Spanish. He didn't speak much English, but he uh, understood English. When, I, when she said, Philip, can I ask you, you know, can I just say one more thing? And I said, no, just listen. And he just roared with laughter. But um, but the, a, a friend of mine once uh, was um, given the direction, can you do it again, but in a bit more of a general overall accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'd need to write that down first. Um, you know, and it's good you know, so I said, can you do it faster in the slow bits and slower in the faster bits? Um, no, it's about, there was one guy who was having a bad hair day, um, and he was swearing at me all the time. And it really is one of those sessions where you just think, um, and I'm quite patient and tolerant. Uh, and eventually, uh, um, I just said, can I just say something to you? And I won't repeat his response because I can't. Um, and I said, look, at some point during the session, I, uh, giving you the impression it's okay for you to address me in the way you have just to be clear it isn't and he went i'm abandoning this session and just dropped the line by the time it took me to walk out that door he'd run up three flights of stairs uh, stairs spoken to his boss and his boss and he said uh, you know philip it's uh, nigel here he said i've just spoken to graham he said and as a result of your attitude during the session we're not going to use you anymore and i said would you be prepared to sign something to that effect <laughs> Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bad hair days, <laughs> these are two men that are not having those anytime soon. Yeah, right? it's, just, <laughs> it's just, you see, I'm six foot. If I was five foot eight, I'd have a full head of hair. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and now, and now we'll leave it with this one. Announcer, our friend Doug Turkel says, Philip, I've been trying for years to make my voice <laughs> deeper. If I shave my head, <laughs> will I sound as good as you do? <laughs> yeah, you also need to spend uh, three years reading Law and Economics at Oxford. There you go. <laughs> if you don't recognize the accent, it's educated. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, it has been a super pleasure having you with us here on Voice Over Body Shop. Thank you so much for staying up late. And, it's been uh, a delight. It really has. Thank you so much. It's been, it's been a, a, a true pleasure. Now go walk best. Go walk the dog. Yeah. Uh, just quickly before you go, congratulations to Jacob. He's now in the top 5% of the world's population having graduated. So uh, good on him. Oh, Fantastic. great. Yeah. Congratulations. Jake. All right. Well, we're going to show a little bit of his stuff in just a little bit. So yeah. stay tuned for that. Philip Banks, thanks again for being with us. All righty. Well, we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and sort of say goodbye. So be right where you are when we come back so you can watch it. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. 
You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Yes, VoiceOver Essentials is having its first ever audio accessory sale. The more you buy, the more you save. Get a minimum of 10% off any accessory purchase by buying $50 or more of accessories and then get 12% off. Buy $100 or more of accessory items and get a full 15% off. Discount applies to select accessory items only, like their VO1A a uh, pop filter for for their VO1A microphone. It's the wraparound pop filter, the headphone hanger for hanging your uh, your your headphones. What a great Which idea! Is really useful. I, I can't tell you how many times I, I, I watched headphones right over crashing there. crashing to the floor because they're never hung on something. Proper, That's right. So. The ABS boom stop or boom jock, as I like to call it. And mm -hmm. so, if it, you know, if you got one of those weak goosenecks in your boom, uh, it will hold it up. Yep. Kind of important. Also, the uh, uh, the Harlan Hogan stopwatch. He also, actually has that. He actually has a Harlan Hogan stopwatch. And, of course, our wildly popular multicolored LED voiceover recording sign with remote on sale. All you got to do is click the on sale button menu item on the voiceoveressentials.com website for all the full details. So, uh, yes, thank you, Carol Merrill. There's a, there's a name that hasn't been heard in quite some time. Uh, yeah, get the recording sign. It's great uh, because you can set codes with it and all sorts of things so people know exactly what's going on in your booth. Or maybe they don't. Anyway, go over to voiceoveressentials.com now for their accessory sale. And uh, the way to do that is go to voiceover extra, voiceoveressentials.com. And Click or on the on sale button menu item right on their website. And you'll, it'll just come up. And you'll and you'll see those. So, Boom. Uh, or go to the bottom of our website here, where you know his picture of him talking into his porter booth is right there. Click on that; it'll take him right there. He'll know that we sent you, and then he will continue to be our sponsor, so we can continue to bring you this amazing show with great guests Simple like Philip Banks. All righty, all right. We'll be right back after this. Thanks, Harlan. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. That was great having Philip Banks on. It was. I mean, really you know, great. he has a reputation, but he's a gentleman, and he was great having him on. He's sort of like the British Bob Sauer. They sort of <laughs> sound the same, only with a he, with a slight Scottish accent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, there was a, something that came in earlier that was in the chat room that yes. we didn't address. It was about um, using Visden. Uh, someone said, can I use it in the hinterlands or out in the sticks or if whatever? If you got internet. <laughs> Basically, yeah, if you have broadband, and broadband doesn't mean like super high speed, yeah. 50 megabits up and down. If you've got consistent three to 800 kilobits a second, your typical DSL, um, you're good. Because ISDN, the, the, the way ISDN works is it combines two channels of data. as an A and a, or they call them B channels. And they reach 64 kilobits a second, <laughs> not that fast. And when they're smashed together, you get 128K 
128 kilobits per second. So as long as you have an internet connection that's reasonably faster than that, maybe two to 300 kilobits per second consistently, you know, if, if you can get that day in, day out, you're good to go. Good to know. You don't need super high speed to do something like that. So no. Vizden is going to be good for you probably. Yes, absolutely. All right. Next week on this very show, right. we won't be here. Oh, good. We're taking another week off because Jacob, is gr his graduation is next Monday and there'll be people here and it'll just be difficult to do. So maybe we can do it another night. That but means I can go do my Monday night Kirtan chant. There you go. That I've been really missing for the last three or four, seven years. <laughs> uh, on June 18th, though, Phil Proctor from Fireside <laughs> Theater will be returning to our fine little theater no here. Yes. Uh, cool. He has a book coming out and uh, we'll have more great stories from him. Uh Fun. June 25th, Dave Crevassier is getting on the 15 and coming down through the, He's the Cajon, Pass, Cajon Pass and joining no us here way. in our studio. Uh, he just retired from a, a wonderful career as a, an anchorman and is now full-time voiceover, and we're going to hear all about what that transition was like. That'll be interesting. Cool. Yes. That's awesome. Who are our donors of the week? I noticed there were a few. There were, actually. Let's go check the donor box. We've got donors. We've got donors. We've we got lots, lots and lots of donors. Donors! donors. <laughs> Eric Aragoni, uh, Andrew Kaufman, if you ever watch the show, these names are extremely familiar to you because they donate Regularly. practically <laughs> every week. Uh, Don Griffith, another regular donor. Thank you. Um, we've got... Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep those donors scrolling. Martha Khan. Hey, Martha. Hey, what's up? Thank you. Um, Shanna Pennington Baird and Antland Productions. Still in some way sponsoring the show. Thank you, Uncle Roy. And let's go back a couple more because we skipped a week, so I need to go back a little further. Diana Birdsall. Thank you. Stephanie Sutherland. These names, familiar. These yeah. people are regular. Patty Gibbons. Regular donors to the show, they uh, they've they've clicked the little subscribe button and they're sending us anywhere from a buck a week or more or a month, whatever it is they want. You know they can do that, and you can do it too, just right here on the website. Yes, and the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for Better Webcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. No, oh, thank you. Uh, let's see. If you got a problem with your home studio, or if you don't know anything about a home studio, there's only two places you can go: here, or yeah. There. And to get there, you go to... I'm so glad we rehearsed this. I know. Uh, I'm over at George the Tech. GeorgeTheTech.com. That's where my brand of tech support is. You can book support there. You can get processing stacks. I'll help you design your studio or just listen to your audio and do a sound check. Right. And like I do then? this. And I do the same thing. Uh, you can go over to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Yes, the greatest website uh, URL ever found. Yes, it is great. It, it, it is. It's yeah, it's a lot to type in. But uh, if you need help with your home studio, we're the guys to come to. Uh, everybody's an expert on a home studio, usually their own. Trust the guys that have done hundreds, probably upwards of a thousand by Between now. us, definitely over a thousand. thousand yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see what else. Um, show logs. We have the show logs. You can access them right here on the website. If you like techie, geeky podcasts, there's my podcast, The Pro Audio Suite, with uh, Andrew Peters and Darren Robertson and Robert Marshall. Marshall yes, that's out there. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to be uh, here in our studio, you can do that. Just write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV or be like Mark Cashman and just drop in. <laughs> just drop in, which, which he did very sneakily the, the, tonight. He, he and, absolutely uh, did. He did not make a sound. Yeah, but if you want to come and see the show and you're here in the greater Los Angeles area on a Monday night, uh, write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV and mm -hmm. subject audience. And we'll give you the secret handshake. Also, send us your pictures of your booths. We want to see your booths. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like this picture of LA at night. It's kind of cool from behind the Hollywood, you know, from standing behind the Hollywood sign. But we want to see what your booths look like and send them in landscape, and not scheme. in portrait. Right. Why am I taking pictures in portrait? It makes no sense to me. Uh, anyway, uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VO to Go Go. 
VoiceActorWebsites.com and J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. Well, we need to thank Marcy, of course, for letting us be out here in the garage, which mm -hmm. is really kind of cool. Our producer, Catherine Curden, for getting us great guests like Philip Banks. Yes. Uh, can't beat that. On and on. Jack Daniel uh, for chat room duty tonight and our floor producer and technical director. And it was perfect tonight. I think this is a no edit. Uh, I got a little uh, bit. Okay. Never, Never satisfied. Okay. That's Sue. But yeah, uh, Sue no. Merlino, thanks great. for helping us. And yes. Jack DeGoli for the show notes and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, stay tuned because we're going to run a cartoon, which is Jacob's latest project. And it's different. It's very different. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, you know, we know this is not an easy business. We appreciate you coming here. But if something breaks, here's what we like to say. When, when in doubt, reboot. reboot. We'll see you next week, guys, or in two weeks, actually. So stay tuned for Jacob's Cartoon, and we'll be see you in two weeks. Bye. Lactose intolerant. Boing.